welcome again to our Holy Spirit series as we continue to consider a sub-series on the fruit of the Spirit. And last time we, we looked at how this is the very life of God's Son, God's life flowing through us. That's the fruit displaying the personality and the character of God himself. And of course, fruit is an indication of root. And uh, we see that, don't we, in in John 15, verse 16, where, where Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. And it's because we are engrafted into the vine that is Jesus Christ, and his life is flowing through us from the vine into the branches that we can bear fruit. So fruit is an indication of root life, that it is the life of God in Jesus that is flowing in us that produces the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, uh, self-control and goodness. And these, these are nine fruit. Notice it, please. Um, it doesn't say plural fruits, but nine fruit singular and uh, it says that, that this is the fruit of the spirit not are the fruit of the spirit again it's in, in singular so the idea is not that um, Tom over there he's got love and uh, James he's got peace and joy well you know what she's got joy that's not the idea at all the fruit of the spirit are is a multifaceted singular fruit that produces all these characteristics. And in fact, you, you can reduce the fruit of the Spirit down to one word describing it, and that is the word character. Whose character is it? Well, that's obvious. It's the character of Jesus inwrought by the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's the very character of God displayed through his Son via the instrumentality of the Holy Spirit. I want you to think about this from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and the wonderful passage on love. Verse 4, we read, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. And of course, love is the first description of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5. But I want you to consider this for a moment. Replace the word love in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 following with the name Jesus. Look at what happens. Jesus suffers long and is kind. Jesus does not envy. Jesus does not parade himself. Jesus is not puffed up. Jesus does not behave rudely. Jesus does not seek his own, is not provoked. Jesus thinks no evil. Jesus does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Jesus bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Jesus never fails. Amen to that. This is a description of Jesus because God is love. Jesus is the incarnation and manifestation of of God, God's Son, and now He lives in us by the Holy Spirit. So when we produce the fruit of the Spirit, the first thing described is love, we will be like Jesus in how we love. Now, how's that going for you? <laughs> well, I'll try and replace Jesus with my name. David suffers long. Ooh, I think I might have to stop there. <laughs> uh, Jesus is kind but David is he kind <laughs> David does not envy David do, does not parade himself does not boast is not puffed up oh that doesn't feel good because so much of the time I am not displaying the fruit of the spirit in in the love of Christ and, and that's what we need because the goal of the gospel you see is not just to make sure we go to heaven when we die and thank God that's a part of it but the goal of the gospel is God wants to make you like his son. He wants to conform us all to the image of Jesus. He, he wants to transform us through the Spirit's power to look like Jesus. 
Now, how does that work? Well, it doesn't happen with a flick of a switch. Um, 2 Corinthians gives us a clue to this. Uh, chapter 3 and verse 18. Verse 17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. You see, what happens is, when we behold the manifestation of the love of God, the agape love of God, who is Jesus incarnate, when we spend a life of contemplating him, of adoring him, of spending time like Mary did at his feet, we we become like what we behold and we are conformed by the Holy Spirit's power into his image and then we start producing fruit. Now this is important. It's important even, not least, and we'll see this later on when we turn to a sub-series on the gifts of the Spirit, that uh, of course chapter 13 of Corinthians is sandwiched in between chapter 12 and 14 that have so much to say about the gifts and Paul's basically saying if you have all these gifts and have them in great unction and abundance but don't have love you're nothing so if you have gifts but no character that means nothing to God and it shows also the difference between fruit and mere works works is a thing of effort uh, mechanics it speaks of toil and labor and the result of work alone in the flesh is weariness faintness and frustration and uh, work of course is accompanied by much fleshly effort a lot of display and noise but fruit is very different how is it different well it it does involve work of course but it's not our work that's important I mean, a farmer might say to me, oh, you would know you were a city slicker and you didn't know anything about how fruit is produced, how vegetables. There's a lot of work involved in that. But listen, the Bible teaches us that it's not our work. It's the work of the husbandman. And the husbandman, the farmer in Scripture, is always God the Father. And it's the work of Jesus on the cross. And our job is not to work up fruit but to abide in the vine and all the branches to do is receive, to yield to the life of the vine, to abide and dwell there and just draw off the life of Christ, accepting that, and that's faith. Just drawing and receiving, accepting it, that's faith. Fruit is grown as the branch abides in the vine. Isn't that what John 15 says again, verse 4 and 5 Jesus says abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me I am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing you see a machine can do work church maybe should start making robots to do work if that's all that it's involved is involved in serving the lord but only life can produce fruit only life can produce life and it's the difference between a factory and a garden what's your life more like what's your church more like it means that we we cease to have confidence in the flesh but there's an honest confession of our weakness A humility, Lord, I can't do this on my own. And a surrender to the will of God and and saying, Lord, I'm emptying myself that you might cleanse me and fill me with your life, your power, that I might produce your fruit. And that's why the picture that the Holy Spirit gives us through Paul in Galatians is of fruit and not flowers, for instance. You know, flowers are decorative things. And flowers make you look better. But fruit, of course, you don't generally hang apples and oranges up uh, to decorate your kitchen, bananas here and there. But fruit is there as food. And John Stott put it like this, the Christian should resemble a fruit tree, not a Christmas tree. We're not meant to be on display for others to see and admire. 
but fruit is for feeding the hungry. Isn't that right? And these qualities in the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, are not so that others can look at us and say, isn't David Legg such a great fellow? But they're there so that others would see Christ in us. But more than that, glorifying Jesus, but also feeding that the hungry may feed off the life of Christ in us so that they may be fed by him. People who are hungry for God, that they might find God in us. I don't know whether you've ever seen artificial fruit. Sometimes in a display in a furniture store or something like that, there's a bowl of plastic or wooden apples and oranges. Um, And if you try and sink your teeth into those, uh, you'll need a few crowns after that. There's no nutritional value in artificial fruit. And artificial Christians, skin deep Christians, Christmas tree Christians, They might look good on display, but they're not doing good to the world and to those who are hungry for reality and an encounter with God. And so as Christians, can I exhort you, so much of the church has been, I think, eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Isn't it interesting that that tree in the Garden of Eden was a tree of knowledge? But it was also knowledge of good, not just evil. It was knowledge of good. And so often Christians, this is where the Galatians were making the mistake, they were feeding off that tree of knowledge of good, what they thought was good and moral and religious, fitted in with Judaism and what these Judaizing teachers, we'll see see later on perhaps what they were saying, you know, keep the law, uh, be circumcised, keep, keep the rituals of Judaism, and then that'll be enough plus the cross, plus uh, Jesus' sacrifice to get you to God. But no, that, that, that was not the truth. The truth is, it's, it's the cross and the cross alone. It's the life of Jesus alone that can, can produce the fruit that we need. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, if you feed off the good, you'll still produce evil, the works of the flesh, Galatians 5. We are meant to be feeding off the tree of life. And the tree of life is Jesus Christ. And as we draw of his life, the sap of his life from the vine, we the branches will bear much fruit to his glory. And it will not be our glory, it will be his glory. And people will see Christ in us. And people will find Christ through us and feed off Christ in the fruit of that we offer to the world. So is that the pattern that you find in your life? Is that the process? Or is it more mechanics? Does it feel like too much effort? Is there a lot of striving? If there is, there'll be exhaustion, there'll be frustration. And maybe you even feel like giving up. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke is gentle. My commands are not burdensome, but they are easy. It's not easy being a Christian in the day and age in which we live. I don't mean that, but what I do mean is it's meant to be more like a garden than a factory. There needs to be more delight in it. There needs to be more reproduction of life rather than a factory production line. Of product so Lord we just pray that we will display your life through our lives for your glory oh Lord we want to abide in the vine and ask that your life would abide in us and we would abide in you Lord that others would see Jesus in us and find Jesus through us that the hungry the hungry for God will see your life in us. For the glory of Christ we pray. Amen. God bless you. See you again as we delve further into the fruit of the Spirit.